we've been to Wolf Trap. We've been to San Diego State University. No kidding. Oh, we've been all over. Dude, if anybody ever told me I'd ever do any of this, of course, I, I'm doing it because I'm with him. So, yeah. I mean, but uh, we've really gotten to do a lot. Been to St. Louis, oh, time and time again, all over the state on different things, you know. <laughs> well, he's different. He plays a lot of different stuff. He doesn't play the run of the mill stuff, you know. He did an awful nice, nice yeah. fiddler. We give a lot of programs. We're going to give one next month at Merrimack College and uh, give a little concert, and then the next day we get our folklore class. We're going to give, we give, we do quite a bit of that on old time fiddling and the old you know, and everything. But it's a lot of fun. And it gets to you. Yeah. But, but I lucked off. I got in 76, probably the first time I ever sat down and really even played with anybody. I'd had a guitar for years, you know, and fooled around with it. But I got in with art. I got in with Lonnie. Through Art, I got in with Lonnie, and then through Art, I got in with a man who's dead now named Raymond Campbell, who all played the guitar also. So they were able to show me what they wanted me to do, and uh, they really taught me. Art's really taught me a lot. And, and who was the old black man that played the. Byron uh, Kelly. Byron Kelly. Bay. He's gone now. Uh, Emmanuel Woods, see, all these guys are gone. Emmanuel Woods, uh, who had the little place there in Old Ark. Do you ever go to that? No. Well, he's. Yeah. he's we played it two or three of their funerals with the fiddle and the guitar, you know, and that, which is really appropriate for those fellows because that's all they ever, all they ever did, really. Do you know Johnny Boyd here in town? Uh, I've heard the name. I don't know who you're speaking of, but and I don't he, know. He, he came from Ozark in the first place. Yeah, I might play banjo or? Plays uh, mandolin and fiddle. I don't really know as many uh, as many as I'd like to know. I know a lot of them, but there there's so many of these guys. And I don't we don't ever I don't get around a lot to these music shows or to uh, I know a lot of the fiddlers over in uh, Ozark and Douglas County. I know it's, it's just wherever I get in with a certain group, I learn those people. Oh, yeah. you know. Mm -hmm. And I know uh, up in Green County, of course, a lot of those up there. It's just like anybody. It's who you play with, you yeah. learn to know, you know, and everything. The art would know. He knows all these people. Every glory. Let's see how we're in tune here. Sounds pretty good. Yeah. You know that after I left, the second I got in the car to drive away, I thought, my lord, that's Seamus O'Brien. So we play it in G. And yeah. Had, but Lonnie played it in A, but I couldn't remember, and I kept, I was trying to put two, that simply went to a B. I remember it the second I got in the car. I said, here I was trying, he went from that F sharp minor to the B and then back down. And I've been trying that, to put uh, some That goes good in G. Yeah.
tradition is a little bit different in the, he goes in and let's see to be my it's a little different he, he, he just his family just played a lot of things just a little different you know which yeah. is fun i mean that's yeah. to me the big fun of all this is nobody plays exactly the same now we've been around irish fiddlers and i know uh after in washington why i saw four of them sit down that hadn't seen each, i could tell the way they were talking they hadn't seen each other in years and they'd play those fast horn pipes and reels note for note four fiddles they sound just like one but they take great pride in playing it like old Johnny McGreevy played it at such mm -hmm. and such a time, you know. Whereas here, if you play something exactly like somebody all the time, they say, ah, he's got no style of his own, you know. And that's what makes it fun then, because everybody plays something a little bit yeah. different, you know. That's what's good about it. Well, there's still a lot of fiddlers around there. People don't realize how many are. Yeah, I think so. A lot of young ones coming on, too. This Doc Bow not in here yeah. is looking good. Over at uh, Pineville. Uh, Johnston, Neil. Uh, Those are brothers, there's yeah. three of them, yeah. Neen's probably the one you've heard the most down here. Yeah. Let's try that, uh, that hooker's horn pipe. Yeah. Uh, they all play that. That's the deal. tunes, you know, and all this, and come to find out, he brought most of them back, you know, from up in your, up in your part of the country. He played one called uh, Rock All the Babies to Sleep, a waltz. Did you ever hear that? No. And I, it sounded to me just like it came from that here, but he, something else he got up there. Oh, well, I'll be darned. But he brought so many older tunes down uh, that uh, you'll hear them occasionally. You probably have heard some uh, that don't sound like they're from down in here. I mean, you know, some of these... Uh, Hornpipes mainly is what it is, Frank Bell Hornpipes. Although, oh, some of those waltzes he brought down. What's that? Kaiser waltz, stuff like that, you know. Some of those they brought from up there. I think he. The cowboy waltzes from up there. Uh huh. Did you ever know Lonnie here? Uh, no, not really. Yeah. I met him once out here to a, a fiddle contest, a thing is down at Golden. Mm -hmm. and, yeah, he used to go down there occasionally. So I was down. I was over there with some friends from here, and uh, they were talking to him over there and asking him if he ever knew uh, a Walters. Mm -hmm. And yeah, and I didn't get to visit yeah, with him yeah. at all. He was. He didn't like. To, he didn't like to jam. He wanted to play, and everybody sat there and listened to it. As soon as somebody else started playing, he'd leave and see. He just wanted to hear it. Yeah. But he's a good fiddler. That's what I mean. I really had the best of about four of the best fiddlers in this part of the country up there. Fun. Let's try that devil's dream now. Okay. Thank 
start taking it up again and then the problem is I can't find anybody to play with you know mm -hmm. and uh, but we'll you'll get involved so I was gonna have a music party tomorrow and I was starting to plan that I think my lord that's Super Bowl a half of them wouldn't come you know so yeah, I'm gonna have one here it may be on me probably be on a Saturday or Sunday afternoon it seems to be best I sure want you I'll call you I'm sure ahead of time you know because I think you'd really be interested in hearing that uh, yeah get some of these other fiddlers from around the area up you know I don't have any trouble getting them to come. You know. Got a boy next door that plays the bass, a young couple. Oh, he's he just is, doesn't slap it at all. Just good soft rhythm behind you, you know. Good. And, uh, yeah. But we have a lot of music when we get our set our minds to it. Then. Then Bob used to play one called Dusty Miller. Yeah, that's the and, uh, it's, uh, That's the A. Yeah. Thank you. 
Because Lonnie, see, when Lonnie died, nobody else plays those. Uh, Granny, your daughter. Oh, yeah. Nobody down here plays that. Today. And I was forgetting where I was supposed to go there. <laughs> I'm thinking, now Lonnie changed a few of these, you know. I'm thinking he played that in G, because I remember when I went to that. I may be wrong. I'll go back and check. And then we had a Frisky Jim. Yeah, all right. That C was that? That's A. A. <laughs> this would be a good place to retire and uh, we had a farm and, and a dairy herd so I quit dairying and rent the farm out and went to work in Omaha in a machine shop mm -hmm. and worked there for 10 years and then we decided to, after the winter of 68 and 69 I'm telling you they were bad and we said to heck with it so we sold the farm See, Nebraska and Iowans have always come down in here. Yeah. Uh, years and years ago, I knew people that uh, I have a. We've been our little business has been going for 53 years. My dad started, and but it's uh, blueprint supply, surveying supply. So we have always been around people that were involved with land, and we always had a lot of Iowans and Nebraskans that had bought land because it's inexpensive anyway. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about in the 30s and back in the 40s. You know, so we always had a lot of, of course, a lot of them then moved. You get over, there's whole settlements of Iowans over in little pockets around here, you know, I guess like there is Illinois yeah. and everything else. Down on Case Club Road, I think there's signs of Iowa settlement. Yeah. <laughs> well, I know over there at uh, Eagle Rock, I was trying to find a man over there one time, and there was a shopping center, and I think just about every business there was owned by Iowans. The guy, the realtor, told me when I finally got to the end there, trying to find him, I knew where the guy lived. This is a, a little more 
more volume to it, doesn't it? A little fiddle that fiddle that Sue gave me when I first started playing again back about 20 years ago. I quit playing when I was 20, left home, you know, yeah. went to work, and then uh, I started again. Well, did your family all, besides your uncle, I mean, did your dad play too? Yeah. Your yeah. whole family? Mm -hmm. yeah. What did you play most left there? What part did you, what the, for dances, I mean, did they, they square or shoddish, or what was their main dances? Oh, they played a lot of six, eight time up yeah. there. But they and, square uh, to it, I mean, square, yeah. square dancing, you know, that's what the deal yeah. was. Uh, you take back in the during the depression, they'd have house dances yeah. every oh, yeah. Saturday night of our place and the next time over there, and uh, they'd have an organ or a piano or, yeah. or, or like when Bob was a kid. He used to play with his dad, and they just played two fiddles. Yeah. Well, you probably heard here. that on there. Yeah, well, uh, and they did anyway down in here, because that's all they had sometimes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they were lucky if they had one fiddler in some of these areas down because this was so isolated down in here, you know. Yeah. Because that's where that skillet licking, they call it, you know, came in, that cording with one fiddle cord and the other one. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Used to hear, hear a lot about that. That play Soldier's Joy.
he is, don't you, Cyril Stanley? Yeah, Ford. I got one of his records. Yeah, mm -hmm. and that's a lot of his stuff has gone across. He's one of the very popular among the younger fiddlers, too, that were oh. trying to learn this, mm -hmm. go back to the old style, which some of them are trying to do now, you know. He lives up around Oregon. Yeah, know? he does. Oregon, and, Missouri. Yeah, mm -hmm. and he's been trying to uh, make it up to the Walters reunion, he, and, but he never has made it. Well, well I made it up there. His, I don't know how his health is now. I don't, it's, it's failing a little bit. He, they said his brother died that lived up there. and that, See, he's probably originally from Portland up here. Oh, yeah. And uh, have you ever, you know him? Have you ever met him? No. He's a man of few words. <laughs> he said, he doesn't say two words, I bet, but he's really a good fiddler. Now, he has a uh, brother, um, I don't know, it was Pete Stan, I've forgotten what his name, that was at St. Louis one time at the Arch that, that was playing with him, a really a nice fella. And I think he kind of took him around, but I don't know whether he's still playing with him. Uh, he don't drive anyway. No. That someone would have had to drive. I've got some tapes that these young fiddlers have gone up there and visited with him and made, you know, and got oh, some yeah. good stuff. Boy, he knows a lot of stuff. I don't know how many he knows. Well, you knew, uh, oh, uh, <laughs> live over there east of him. There was a, he was president of this, oh, uh, I'll think of him in a minute here. Lena, well, Lena, I can't think of the name. I'll think of it. He was he was kind of head of that to Missouri Fiddlers Association for a while until he made it all mad and they split up. <laughs> oh, I'll think of him in a minute. I guess you don't know him. I probably don't know yeah. him. Yeah. yeah. Hughes, Jake Hughes and Lena Hughes. Oh. They were about oh. close to where Cyril lives. Yeah, they played uh, whiskey before breakfast. Yeah. D. Yeah. yeah. speed. There's so many notes in it, you know. Yeah. Uh, it takes an exceptional fiddler to play it fast without slurring them, so most of them slur them when they try to play them fast. Mm. That's pretty good old too. Yeah, it is. That's good. We play it quite well. What are some other waltzes you used to play? Uh. Now they, uh, that's that St. Paul waltz, and it's almost the same thing as that cattle call. Yeah, yeah, Lonnie played that. But, uh, let's play it.
plan because nobody else plays on that. And I don't know the name of this one, but it's similar. It's sound familiar because it sounds like that St. Paul, but still it it, uh, mm -hmm. it has a familiar ring to it, but that's a pretty waltz. This is one that Dad used to play quite a bit. Now your dad was then who? What was his name? Uh, he was Sant. S S Sanford. 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 He was, and he was the oldest boy of the bunch. Yeah. Well, what was, were they from, what was their background? and Where did the fiddling come from with them? Were they, uh, uh, <coughs> Scotch, Irish, English, I mean. Uh, well, he was, he was German. He was Irish. The old man, way back. Your grandfather, then, probably. No, right? my great 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 grandfather yeah. mm -hmm. came from Ireland, mm -hmm. and he was adopted. His name was Grogan, mm -hmm. and he was adopted by uh, Walters in Kentucky. Yeah. They were probably and, probably uh, fiddlers, I'm sure. I mean, it probably came right on. Uh, he must have been. Yeah. And he was in George Washington's army. Mm -hmm. And then either his son or his grandson came to Missouri right in, very, in the early 80s. Early 1800s. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And he had a sawmill in Missouri somewhere, and I don't know where it was. And then he moved from here up in the Nebraska on a on an island on the Missouri River. Mm -hmm. It was in Iowa at the time, but uh, it was one of these deals. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And he had, but he had three boys, and he had quite a spread. And uh, the whole bunch went out from there. Yeah. And it was around Decatur, Nebraska, mm -hmm. where they lived. So the the come on yeah. mm -hmm. this, I, That's what I mean. There's, there seems to be, now of course that waltz almost has a German uh, air to it, more mm -hmm. or less, you know, but the hornpipes and everything, that has to be Scotch and English, you know, that, yeah. that much there. Down here, of course, and probably the same thing, with your, it's really your Scotch-Irish, which for years mystified me. How could you be a Scotch-Irish? Everybody called me Scotch-Irish. Well, it's Ulster Scotch, I understand now, in recent years, Northern Scotch. 
the Northern Irelanders that came from Scotland and settled up where all the trouble is now. You know? Oh, yeah. And those are the yeah. ones that came into the Carolinas and then to Kentucky. And see, up until the 50s, in this region, 90% uh, of the people that lived here were probably from Tennesseans. Because mm -hmm. that's who settled this, this, this area on the other side of the White River here. Where Oh, almost all Tennesseans. And then in the f late 50s and early 60s when the dams came in, then came the, the big change in this part of the country of uh, people retiring, but also people getting away from the cities. You know. And mm -hmm. that's, that's changed some things because uh, there's so many people that come in or whatever. Thing. I got Artie's book and read it, that one that he oh, had that there talking about. Uh, yeah, and that was interesting. Yeah. He seemed like a pretty nice fella. Yeah. He's kind of a controversial person, I understand that, in this country, you know, in a way. But uh, he seemed nice enough to me. I, I think they've got noble, noble aims, but uh, uh, other than just getting together and jamming, and for a person like me, it's fun to take your tape recorder because I'll meet some other, well, I'll bet you see. Yeah, yeah. And then yeah. And I'll pick up some yeah. more stuff, you know. And I'm not much of a bluegrass man. Me. Uh, after, you, after you listen to it for a while, it all starts sounding yeah. the same, you know. Uh, down yonder. Or slowing you down or anything, yeah. But say if oh, I, oh, this say if I, I like this. Say if I'm and Marmaduke Torn Yeah. Now that's a good old Missouri horn. We'll right? give that a shot. Yeah. Here.
little different. Got an EAD in there, kind of like Durang's almost there on their second part. No tape recorders or anything, and the only time, especially in these isolated areas in the hills here, either somebody would leave and hear a tune, or another fiddler would come through the area. Well, these guys would hear it one time. Yeah. And then they'd have to go home, and they'd get home and sit down. Well, and they didn't always remember it exactly. So you'd get just a little variation. Or they get maybe they'd hear two or three tunes, and by the time they got home, they'd mix those up. And it's real interesting to, uh, to hear some of these will have a part in them that you know comes from such and such old hornpipe, you know, yet here'll be another part in there too. But it fitted right in with what they wanted to do, though, you know. Oh, I think it's really interesting, this view, because it's not a, do you read music? Uh, very, very little. That's, yeah. I bet you, uh, when I have time, I've worked, been engrossed in another book for seven years, and when I get through with that thing, it's just about finished now. They don't want to get into this fiddling stuff. And uh, I've kept a pretty good record of all the fiddlers and, and all the tapes and what we've played and what they played and uh, what key they were in and everything. And then I want to start sorting all this out and just, uh, and I know 95% of these can read the music, or can read a little bit like you probably, just a little bit, but 90% yeah. can't read, no, I can't, I wish I could, I can't read another music. I, um, I got that book that, uh, Christensen made, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. and, uh, I used it quite a bit at first to kind of refresh on, on oh, yeah. some of mm -hmm. that I'd forgotten during yeah. the year. Mm -hmm. this is one well, that's where all the young ones, a lot of them, they, they can read music, I know four young, by young I'd say late 20s that have uh, gone to Christensen's book and play so many of those tunes, and also this Thousand Fiddle Tunes, they've gone to that book, that Coleman's book, you've seen that, I'm sure. No, I haven't. Oh, it's been out for years and years, and it gives just a couple of lines of all, of a thousand uh, fiddle tunes. Oh, does Christensen mention that, Coleman's? He might, yeah. Mm -hmm. I believe he does on that record. And he's, well, in his, uh, in his uh, bibliography, that he used, yeah, he mentions that. R. R. Ford's book, yeah, that was another one he yeah. mentioned, you know, on some of those. But uh, these young ones, really, well, we'll, you'll be around some of them now. I got, I'll get you in for the now, see. Now, to bound you, while you'll have to get in with some of this for these people because they really have a good time. And this excellent musician, boy, they're good. Yeah, that's good. Well, we better play uh, coming down from dinner. Oh yeah. I wish I'd, uh, I guess it, I got used to, finally got used to playing in this A, and uh, I think a capo a lot of times does sound better on something, but this 
guitar. It doesn't do it now. It used to be. Maybe it was I didn't have a tune in the first place. When I put a capo on it, I have to sit here and retune the thing. So I just quit fooling with it, you know. And I can't make quite the runs in that, but they can on the bluegrassers, you know. But like yeah. Oshet Atkins said, uh, I heard him say one time, anytime you go in day, listen for the capos to be <laughs> 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 I lived down here 14 years. Yeah, in the spring it'll be 14 years. I'd pick you to be what, 65? Or... No, I'm 68. 68, right? Yeah. Yeah. Let's see, uh, West Bay. Yeah. I learned that in the last G. few years. G. G.
an awful lot, of course. And that's one of the most popular, that and Over the Way, so I guess two of the most popular. Mm -hmm. Second part first. You started with a minor part. 
Oh, is that the way yeah. it goes? Oh, it starts with the G, but you start in the minor part there. Oh, yeah, well. That's okay. I mean, that's fine. No, normally they start with the G part of session. There's no right way to play these tunes. The right way is the way the guy playing it plays. That's the truth. Now, if everybody, oh, he didn't play that right. Oh, yeah, that doesn't make any difference. Now, in a contest, it would if they're sitting up there, you know, yeah. judging them. But, I mean, uh, to me, I've never worried about how a guy, if he starts in the middle of the tune, that's okay. If he enjoys playing it that way, that's fine. You know, it comes out all right. It all balances out. A lot of these contests, too, are ridiculous. Oh, yeah. We go to him. Art doesn't worry. He's not a contest fiddler anyway. But we go to him. I go to him simply because I get to meet a bunch of fiddlers, you know, and get to tape a bunch of them and everything. But, oh, some of these guys are really aggressive. Now, that Pete McMahon from up there at Harrisburg, he's won, he won the Missouri. Well, the Missouri means it's held at Columbia. Mm. And uh, that the, the governor at one time said something about, well, we'll make this the Missouri. Well, they don't have but eight or nine con contestants show up, you know. And I don't mean Pete isn't good, but I mean it's really not. The, not the, we have no state fiddle contest in this state. It's never been organized that way. Mm -hmm. But uh, you can tell contest fiddlers. Doc Bowen is a contest fiddler. Yeah, you gotta watch old Doc Bowen now. He played Bowman Ray. Oh, yeah, we play, play, yeah. But Pete McMahon, well, he's just aggressive when he plays. He just bears into it, you know. And you can tell the ones that, that are that way, you know. Well, I think the, the judging is ridiculous. Well, uh, they don't. Uh, it's that golden. Hard <laughs> played. Hard played at Golden this year. I was with him. I was second. Were you? Yeah. And then uh, no. there was another boy there too. Yeah. Well, you were Did you play? No. Well, I didn't think so. I I played there once. And, yeah. Well, we just go to to meet meet all the other fiddlers. Is what we do. You know, because we know so many. Yeah. There's another boy that I, Wayne Lawson, the one Lonnie taught, that played there too. In fact, he was the first contestant. You know. Too old to get that now. <laughs> now piano is excellent on six eight time. That's when the piano comes in good. They, that's the only instrument I've ever heard second six eight and six eight time the good is a piano. Yeah, because they, they can really get the roll on it then, you know. And they used to use organs an awful lot. Yeah, pump work. Yeah, now I've heard. I've never heard that, but that, in this part of the country they did. You know, the, some yeah. of them had those little portable organs too, pump organs that they take to different houses. You know. Clean out the whole front room, take all the furniture out, you know, in the summer. Oh, yeah. And hold these dances. Have you met Emmett Adams down here? No. Emmett lives at Forsyth. Do you know Clay Anderson? Ozarks Mountaineer? No. With your wood carving, you haven't met him yet? He's a fanatic on it. Well, you'll have to meet him. Goodness gracious. Uh, you know that you're familiar with the Ozarks Mountaineer magazine. Well, I'm familiar with it, but uh, well, I don't uh, think you'll have to. You'll have to get with him then, because he... He's a real pusher of, uh, of wood carving, and he's the, one of the big, he's, uh, he's real interested in all the wood carving and everything. He probably undoubtedly knows your daughter, though, see. Is he a wood carver, too? No, huh? Oh, yeah. But he's real interested. Well, he's like I am with fiddling, he's interested in the wood carving. Mm -hmm. Now, did your daughter 
did she have a did she work commercially down here you say or yeah she started working for pete pete engler yeah mm -hmm. out of wilderness clockworks when they had it out there and uh, see after she she had a divorce and her little boy got killed oh my goodness <coughs> and uh so i suggested that she tries wood carving yeah. she's always artistic mm -hmm. and gee, she took right off oh, well. at uh, mm -hmm. one of uh, a chick up there is the first carving she ever did mm -hmm. right. well, did you, did you car do carving at home or did you just pick it up down here or what? Uh, I I picked it up down here you didn't do any back all those years growing up in Nebraska uh, just I, whittling more or less oh, I just whittled yeah like, Quite a lot of change. Well, I'm, so. I'm, really, I'm very impressed with you and your daughter's work. I, that's better yeah. than most of these characters that come roaring through here and put their shops in, you know. That's really good. Well, I, my gosh, I, you, you're going to get a bit and play if he doesn't already know about you. I bet he he knows your daughter, I'm sure, because he knows Pete Engler real well and all that bunch, you know, over around Silver Dollar City and all those people that, that started all the different things. Now, wilderness is at Reed Springs, isn't it? Uh, not anymore. There, we used to Pete be there, though, at the yeah, threshold, he, didn't it? Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> Pete's an awful good public relations man, but he's not a very good business yeah. man. Yeah, mm -hmm. I remember there were some financial and, problems. Uh, so then, uh, he went under out the Reed Springs and came here, and then he got a hold of Ron Kahn. Yeah, I don't know. And he used to be at the Silver Dollar City, mm -hmm. in the business part of it. And he and Ron teamed up, and it makes a perfect pair. And they've got a wilderness clock around, wilderness wood carving. Uh, Mont wood carvers out here on 76. Oh, I know right. where it is, yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah sure. Mark. All right, yeah. And, uh, all right, goodness sakes, they, they've got wood carvers that sell stuff for twenty five, thirty thousand dollars $30,000. Well, now your daughter is she not she's not carving now she's living in Kansas. Uh, not not commercially. Yeah. She's, she started back again three years ago. She had a kidney transplant. Mm -hmm. uh, she got one of her mother's kidneys. Mm -hmm. well, and uh, so then she quit and then she kind of started in again. And now she's doing one of a little girl of uh, one of their friends. Mm -hmm. And uh, she's trying to get them interested. In was she in her early 40s, probably? Or? Uh, she's 38. 38, yeah. Well, I got it yeah. well, that's good. Boy, I tell you, carving is just like music. It's really an outlet. If, you know, for any problem, I could used to be, I could, well, still, I can come home and fiddle around with this thing and relax a lot from having been at work all day, you know, and everything. So that's mm -hmm. good. This carving's the same thing. That's a lot of time for yeah. yeah. See, we never had carvers in this part of the country. We had a lot of whittlers. Mm hmm. And uh, so many of these writers talk about the native Ozarks wood carvers. Well, we really didn't have those. Now, we have a lot of wood carvers that have come to the Ozarks, mm -hmm. you know, and boy, some mm -hmm. good ones and everything. Mm -hmm. Junior Cobb was a. Oh, I, yeah. Well, Junior's an exception. <laughs> uh, have you ever been around Junior? No, but I've heard a lot about him. <laughs> I've been down to his place. Uh, yeah. In the summer, <laughs> Junior comes close to you. You know, your eyes will start watering. I don't. He was at St. Louis one year, and I was around him some. And I swear, if a man had taken wave set and tried to make his hair stand up, we all figured it was that. And we figured after being around him, like it was natural. It was so dirty. It just stood up. You know. Oh Lord. Have you seen that book on wood carvers over around there? Uh, Carved in wood. Carved in wood is the name of it, I think. It's put out by uh, Arkansas State College, and it's on all wood carvers and stuff around in there. Junior's one of them, they ride, but it's mostly the Arkansas. It's the Arkansas carvers over around Mountain View. Well, I've never seen it. Now this, uh, who's the boy that lives in Three Brothers, Arkansas, that does all the carving uh, over there? He does some good stuff. Well, I can't remember them all. My mind goes blank. I know of them, all these people, and then I forget their names. Daughter come back to visit occasionally. I'm sure she yeah. does. Yeah, yeah, I've watched them well. Yeah. Oh, I tell you, I'm really, I was, I'm really impressed at the work you two do. Gosh, next time I come, Mona will be with me. 
<laughs> I want her to see this. Yeah, because you're bringing Well, you, you'll be up to our place before we come back here again, because I'm going to get, in the next few weeks, I'm going to get a music party together. I want you to be sure and come. Where is I'll it? try to get one or two in my house. You I got a big place? place? Yeah, we, we always go in the basement. The living room is the worst place you can play because too much furniture, too many yeah, rugs, you know. Yeah. And my basement's pretty open, so we, we congregate down there. Now, you're retired. Uh, when you get over there, now I can say we'll just have to see what this year rings. I don't think I'm exaggerating. I know there's more than 50. I know that because I've taped more than that over there. So I just run around with my tape recorder. You know? <laughs> what time's it getting to be here? I don't want to overstay my welcome here. It's 2, 2.25. Oh, well, you just, when you're tired, you just yell. And I, I never get tired playing music, but I've got to get home. we got to go somewhere now. We're going out to eat. <clears throat> I like um, Cotton Combs's. Uh, Twinkle Twinkle? Or? Yeah. Yeah. Let's try that. I said, oh, you go in there and listen to Cotton Cones. I looked in there and here was this old guy with a cigarette hanging down and a torn shirt and old blue jeans, you know. Oh, he looked rough, didn't he? Yeah, well, we used to <laughs> we used to say that if we were going to show a young person how not to treat their body, we'd show them cotton. He was only, <laughs> he's only 56 or 57. I can't believe it. You know, I couldn't either when I first heard it. The record that got his picture, he looked like he's 75 yeah, yeah, but years old. But he had more and all one awful bad drinking problems. You know that tune Bob plays on his on that record is that uh, Daniel's Real Me. Mm -hmm. Daniel's I remember seeing the name of uh, it. Anyway <clears throat> it's hard to play but let's, just, let's try it. It's an A. Jack, Jack Danielson. Jack Daniels. Yeah. Yeah.
fiddlers has learned that out of the health Christians and stuff. Oh, yeah. yeah they said, uh, um, well, uh, well, Charlie Walden. Charlie Walden. He's learned a bunch of Cyril. Well, he's learned Cyril Stennett's tunes and out of Christensen's book. This boy started out and had formal training on the violin and oh, became a rock boy. musician and now he's uh, gone to old time fiddling and he teaches up at uh, Columbia. Oh, he's working on his masters at Columbia now. Probably in his late 20s. Oh, well, he's a make, tremendous musician though. Those people make tremendous fiddlers. These people that started well, learning what, fiddle when they, they yeah. three oh, or well, four years old. Yeah, and, yeah. Mm -hmm. I know one old timer who's gone now he used to tell us that anybody's a reader he couldn't be a good fiddler. <laughs> but he, he swore him down that knowing how to read music ruins you on fiddling. And of course, a lot of people can't play without, you know, it regulates you, limits you to what you do. You know. there's, a, there's a teacher, a music teacher down in Harrison. He's really got some little kids playing. They were at the Golden. Oh, oh youngsters, you mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. just little 12, yeah. 14 yeah. year olds. Oh, well, I, there's one up there now that, uh, that Wayne Lawson. Completely different yeah. Uh, yeah. sound to it. It's easier to play, I think, yeah. than that. Do you hear your own bows and everything? No, I used to uh, take them down to uh, Perry. Uh, yeah, oh yeah. 
Art does a lot of that now. He's, he? Yeah, he's and I, from all I can tell, he's very good at it and very reasonable at it. So next time you need some, why well, you might think about him. Yeah. I know he does for three or four of the music stores in town. They have him do their work on their bowls and stuff. Of course, he's a fiddle collector and everything else. You know, he's been retired. He was a. Uh, I'm not much for all this. I, I I don't dislike it. I mean, it's fun to go to and everything, but I kind of shy away from it. I'd rather do this. And go to those music shows and listen to all that. I went, I've gone to, uh, well, I, I think what I enjoyed the most was Party River Boys. Yeah, that's one of the best. I think it is too. That's one of the oldest <coughs> ones down here too. But oh, they've yeah. got some good musicians out there on that yeah. strip. You know that boy that won at Golden? Was it Dale Hopkins? Did he win or did he come in second? He was second. Did you hear that West Valley he played? Yeah. That's as pretty as I've heard anybody yeah. play it. Now, he's one of these hot fiddlers. He's been to Nashville, and he's... And then the uh, Fisher's Hornpipe. Yeah. start getting paralyzed. <laughs> I talk about different names. Now here's one that Bob used to call Gilderoy's Reel. And out in in uh, Oregon they call it Red Haired Boy. Now that that's that goes into A in it. Uh, it in? Probably, I play it in A. Yeah. in part of there, you'll hear them play that a lot. Too. What time is it getting to be here now? Oh, it's quarter to three. Okay, about three here. I better head on back. See, then uh, there's the interesting called the uh, St. Anne's Reel. Yeah.
was the, the Canadian ones that everybody likes down in there. You play wood choppers? No. Choppers Reel, that's another one that's pretty popular down in here too. There's so many of these that we play down here, we find out are Canadian, that interlake walls, and uh, you ever, well, you'll, you'll hear a bunch of these when we get together. Really, we'll sit down and just make an evening of us. Yeah. Get art and yeah. get some of these yeah. others. Yeah, the old Parnell reel. Okay. that in a while. I'm surprised I remembered that. I like that one. That's one Lonnie played a lot. That's where I learned it from Lonnie. You know? Now this yeah. uh, young boy I was telling you about in, in, just in Columbia, he plays that a lot. But real fast. I can't even make the changes. He plays it so fast. You know? oh, That's dear. a good old tune. I really like it. Shoot, I'm having fun. I haven't heard these tunes in two years, see, since Lonnie. They're playing just about everything he played. I can't think of... Uh, I can't think of a tune you played other than that waltz you didn't know the name for that I didn't, uh, that he didn't play. So, and that's, you got them all the same place he did, see, mm -hmm. mostly. Yeah. Well, I mean, Soldier's Joy, and those are pretty common, but I yeah. mean, some of these ones like Parnell, Old Parnell and the Cowboy Waltz and some of that stuff, and that's where he learned them from Bob Walters. Yes, sir. In fact, I think in that, uh, Christensen mentioned somewhere where Bob Walter made a, uh, complimented Lonnie on, uh, some of his playing there, one of those descriptions of the tunes or something like that, you know. But Bonnie was a, he had a good ear. He really did. Yeah, about one more here, and I'm going to have to. Then Bob played one he called Stony Point. Yeah, in G. Yeah. 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 I don't know if I can cut her. Not all kinds of things. 